you are worth the king. Tell him you are faithful. You are mighty to do each and everything in our lives. so glad that God uses people's talents and their treasures to serve him in his house. You're welcome for those who are joining us for your very first time. My name is Abel Moses and I'm one of the servants here at PAG Mitiana. It is such a joy for us to join you in your homes wherever you are watching this. We're just so thankful that you could make some time and be part of this service. Well, if you have not yet subscribed, please click on that subscription button. Let us um, just subscribe so that you can never miss any of our services today. As well, like our Facebook page, that is at Pentecostal Assemblies of God, Mitiana, and our YouTube channel. Subscribe to that at Pentecostal Assemblies of God, Mitiana. It is such a blessing for us to be with you, and we hope that you'll be able to share God's word with a lot of people. Share with your friends. Let them know about what is happening, and may we continue to influence the, the, the community here and beyond with the love of Jesus. Well, a few weeks ago, we started off with a new series called Growing Healthy Relationships. And it's been three weeks when we've been learning so much of what God has been telling us on how we can grow healthy relationships. We believe that the Lord is telling us in this season that it is important to focus on the relationships we have in our families, between spouses, the marriage. In fact, last week we looked at how to grow healthy marriages. And um, we just want to see uh, today how we can restore broken relationships. And I just want to encourage you today, um, and, and just to go back, that to, uh, our, theme, our theme text and our theme verse for this particular theme is found in Ecclesiastes, from verse 4, uh, chapter 4, from verse 9 to 12. It says two people are better than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated. But two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Friends, we believe that relationships are key. We believe that uh, God created us to be social relationships 
so social beings, human beings, uh, social creatures. At the time of creation, God says to, Abra, to Adam that it was not good for him to be alone. And so he created Eve out of him while he lay asleep and created Eve out of his side. And we have seen from then on that billions and billions of people have lived on this planet. And it is just fair enough to say that no man is an island. Everybody needs somebody. But relations face difficulties from time to time. They face strife. Paul tells us in Philippians 2 from verse 1 to 2 that if you have gotten anything out of being, out of being a follower of Christ, if his love has made any difference in your life, if being in a community of the Spirit means anything to you, agree with each other, love each other, be deep-spirited friends. And this is what Paul is telling us, that hey, in case you want to be a successful Christian, in case you want to be a person who is effective in this world, you have to live with one another in harmony. But this is not easy. Of course, people are different. They have different personalities. They have different things they like. And so there is conflict between one another. But the questions we want to answer today is, what do you do if you have a conflict with someone? And what does the Bible say about it? And in trying to answer these questions, you're going to find ways that we can develop and help one another to, to, to bring resolution and, and to just make that conflict go away. So here are seven things that we are going to look at today that will help us to restore our broken relationships. In case you have a broken relationship, maybe it is between you and your sibling, your brother or your sister. Maybe it is between you and your wife or your spouse. Maybe it is between friends, whatever the case is. We're going to give you tips on how you can be able to restore a broken relationship. The first thing that you need to do is to talk to God. Talk to God before you talk to the person. We need to recognize that the Lord knows the hearts of men and by going to him with our hearts, with our motives to be able to restore a broken relationship, we know that what God um, knows is more than what we know. He knows what people's hearts more than we do. So talking to him before talking to the person in trying to re restore that broken relationship is very key. If you pray about the conflict first, instead of gossiping to a friend, you'll often discover that the Lord will make a way for you that you'll never be able to make a way for yourself. So all other relationships would often go easier if we all took some time to bring them before God, to talk to God about that spouse, that friend, that brother or that sister who you have a broken relationship with so that God can walk away and make that relationship restored. The second thing we must do, or you must do in case you have a, a broken relationship or, and a relationship that is struggling, is that you must take initiative. It doesn't matter whether you have been hurt or you are the person who has hurt. What matters is God expects you to make the first move. So friends, are you making the first move? Or are you waiting for the other person to come to you and say they are sorry? The Lord expects you to make the first move. Matthew 5, uh, from verse, Matthew 5 from verse 23 to 24. This is what it says. And why I think it is important for you to make the first move and not wait for anyone else to do it. It says, so if you are presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you. Leave that sacrifice there and at the altar. Go and be reconciled to that person. Then come and offer your sacrifice to God. What Jesus was telling us is before you do any good work, before you think you're doing anything good and you know at the back of your mind you have someone that you have offended or someone that has offended you, go to them. Make peace with them. And then your good works will rise like an aroma, sweet to God, and he will bless you. You need not to wait for anyone else. You need to make the first move in that path of reconciling that broken relationship. The third thing you must, you must do is you must sympathize with your feelings, with their feelings, the people that, has hurt, that have hurt you or the people that you have hurt, the people that you have a, a, a broken relationship with. You must sympathize with their feelings. You must be able to use your ears and less of your mouth. 
Someone once said that the reason why God gave us two ears and one mouth is because God expects us to hear twice as much as we speak. So we must be able to sympathize with the person that is offended or the person that we have offended. We must be able to understand them first before we can actually give the side, a side of our story. And this is what Paul advises us in Philippians 2, verse 4. He says, look out for one another's interests and not just your own. It is true that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And by sympathizing with that, that person that you, you need that relationship restored, you are in fact telling them that I care about you more than I have, more than the things that I have to tell you. So sympathize with the, their feelings. The fourth thing that you must do is to confess your part in the conflict. Confess your part in the conflict. If you are serious about restoring a, a relationship, you should begin by admitting your own mistakes. On top of listening to the other person and listening to their side and trying to sympathize with their feelings, you also go ahead and acknowledge your own mistakes or your own sin. Jesus says it very clearly in Matthew 7, 5. You know, since we all have blind spots, ask God to show you how much of this problem is your fault. And a lot of times, Christians find it difficult to, 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 to look at themselves as the people who have the fault. Sometimes we like to point the finger and we forget that three fingers are pointing back at us. So we must be able to understand what our mistake is in this broken relationship that we want to fix or that we want to restore. The fifth thing that we must do is we must attack the problem and not the person. Attack the, the problem and not the person. You cannot fix the problem if you are confused, co co uh, co if you just want to, to, to fix the blame on someone. This is what Proverbs 15 verse 1 tells us, that a gentle response diffuses anger. It reduces anger. But a sharp tongue kindles a temple fire. In resolving conflict, how you say what you want to say matters. You don't just walk up to someone that you have a conflict with and say what you want to say any way you want to say it. But how you say it is very key. You must attack the problem and not the person. This is how Paul sums up in Ephesians 4, verse 29. Do not use harmful words, he says, but only helpful words, the kind that build up and provide what is needed, so that what you say will do good to those who hear you. The way we say things to the people that we have a conflict with matters. Instead of trying to attack the person, try to attack the problem instead. Try to attack the problem. The sixth thing that we need to do, number six, cooperate as much as possible. Cooperate as much as possible. Romans 12 verse 18 tells us that do everything possible on your part to live in peace with everybody. Paul is telling us that we must do everything possible to live at peace with one another. But of course, peace comes with a cost. It comes with a cost. Peace will cost you your pride, your self-centeredness. Peace will cost you that and much more. We need to be able to establish a relationship even when we are unable to, to you know, be in, in right sense with the person that we are relating with. So how far are you willing, the question I have for you, how far are you willing to give up your pride and your self-centeredness so that you can cooperate and live at peace with that person that you have a conflict with? The last thing and the seventh thing that you need to do and I need to do is we need to emphasize reconciliation and not resolution. It is unrealistic to expect that we will be able to agree upon everything. Because every human being has different personalities. And it would be unrealistic to say that it would be 
the way it used to be. It's unrealistic. But reconciliation focuses on the relationship, while the resolution focuses on the problem. We must be able to emphasize and to focus our energy on reconciling with the person rather than finding a resolution, rather than finding a solution to the problem. Emphasize reconciliation. God expects unity, not uniformity. We can walk arm in arm without agreeing with one another about everything, but walking hand in hand. So this doesn't mean also that you don't, you, you give up on a solution, continue working at a solution, but emphasize that reconciliation to be able to reconcile with that person and live at peace with them. So reconciliation means you're barring whatever conflict that you have and you're focusing on the relationship, on the relationship at, uh, alone. Now that as I conclude and wind up this message today is, is that having known the things that I have told you, what do you need to do when a person doesn't want the relationship to be restored? Because sometimes you can do all these things and the person will still stay stubborn and not want to reconcile with you. What do you do about it? And you may have that question. But this is what Matthew tells us about that particular scenario. Matthew 18, from verse 15 to 17. He tells us, if another believer sins against you, or has hurt you, or has offended you, go privately and point out the offense. Go privately to them and tell them, hey, you did me wrong this way, or we had this misunderstanding. Go to them privately. If the other person listens and confesses it, you have won the person back. But if you are unsuccessful, take one or two others with you and go back again so that everything you say may be confirmed by two or three witnesses. Verse 17. If the person still refuses to listen, take your case to the church. Take your case to the elders. Then if he or she won't accept the church's decision, treat that person as a pagan. This is the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord acknowledges that there are situations where you can try everything possible to reconcile a relationship that is in conflict and it fails. But it also gives us a money on what to do next. The word of God is telling us that in case everything has failed, go to an elder, maybe a mature Christian. Try to reconcile while they are around. If that fails, then you have done your part. Judgment is not upon you. Judgment is for the Lord. And treat that person as a pagan because in their heart, they have forgotten what they have been forgiven of. And they have failed to forgive you. So as I conclude this, is there a relationship in your life that you need to re relook at? Is there a broken relationship in your life? Perhaps you are in a marriage and it is falling apart. Maybe you have a friend that did you so wrong or you did wrong to that person. What do you need to do? Think about these things that I've told you today. Emphasize reconciliation over resolution. But there's a relationship that you can no longer afford to be broken the relationship between you and your God and the solution to this is simple John 3 16 tells us that for God so loved the world you and I that he gave his life he sent his son to give his life for you and I and whoever believes in this son of God will not perish but have everlasting life when we sinned against God, when Adam and Eve sinned against God, our just reward was to burn in hell with worms eating us day and night. That is our just reward for everything that we did to God. But God in his grace and in his mercy sent his son to die on the cross for you and I. So friend, 
if you're listening to this and watching this and you have not surrendered your heart to Jesus, you have not made right that relationship that you have with God that is precious. Maybe you have wandered away and you need to come back to God. You need to come back to God and recommit your heart to Jesus. I'm speaking to you. And I know deep down inside, like God says, he's knocking at the door right now. Would you let him in? Let him in. If you're that person, I just want to ask you to say these words after me in faith, using your tongue and your faith. Say, dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. Thank you for making a way to make my relationship with you right. Jesus, forgive my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and make me a new creature. May my life never remain the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. In case you have prayed that prayer, we are so happy for you. Please go down to the comment section. Let us know about the decision that you have made. We want to celebrate with you, but also we want to pray with you. In case you want prayer, uh, you have a prayer request and you need someone to pray with, you can see the numbers that are down on your screen. And uh, we just want to celebrate you. Uh, send a message on our messenger button in case you want uh, us to reach out to you. And in case you want to uh, support this program and this ministry, please give with all your heart. Because the Lord says, the Lord rewards a cheerful giver. And from us to you, we just want to wish you a wonderful week ahead. We hope that you, the Lord will keep you safe and he will give you perfect health. Continue to, subs um, to share this message with a lot of people. Subscribe if you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel at Pentecostal Assemblies of God, Mityana, and like our Facebook page, follow us, share, and we, may, may we all together infect this world with the love of Jesus. God bless you and have a wonderful week ahead. Your best days are not behind you. Your best days are ahead of you in Jesus' name. Amen.